Nehru, uh, Public Institution for Research-Based Engagement. And Psyche is our fifth exhibition and the third online exhibition that we've been holding. Um, today's lecture is um, by Ted Porter. It gives me great pleasure to introduce him and his lecture to you today um, and to warmly welcome my colleague. Um, his lecture is entitled Representing Heredity, Asylum Tables of Family Insanity. Ted teaches various topics involving the history of science, especially the human sciences. By 1980, he became interested in diverse sites of knowledge making, not just universities and academics, but mining boards, statistical agencies, notably census offices, engineering corps, and mental hospitals. Most of Ted's work has involved the use of statistics, calculation, numbers, measures, and data. His most recent book, Genetics in the Madhouse, The Unknown History of Human Heredity, recovers a long forgotten form of hereditary investigation that took shape in the 1820s. Do join us tomorrow. So just, this is just to remind our audiences for uh, upcoming programs uh, for part two or episode two of Hamlet's Live, um, which is a performance by Kavya Krishnan. Uh, sorry, uh, my apologies, Kavya Srinivasan tomorrow at 5 p.m. And the next lecture in our public lecture series by Alok Sarin called The Paradox in Psychiatry at 6.30 p.m. Um, do remember to type in your questions in the Q&A box. And of course, we would love to have your feedback. And with this, Ted, over to you and look forward to um, hearing what you have to say. Um, okay, good. I'm, am I um, showing up on the right scale here? Yes, and we can hear okay. you as well. Yes. Okay, good. Um, so, well, it's a, uh, it's, uh, it's almost a pleasure too. But oh, why don't you, can you start, start my slide? A little okay. early in the, in the morning for me here, since uh, between, uh, between India and, or at least uh, Eastern India and the, uh, uh, in California, it's uh, almost a complete, uh, you know, reverse reversal from morning to tonight. Um, but uh, anyhow, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of amazing and wonderful to be able to speak with uh, friends and um, and colleagues, uh, you know, at the other side of the world, or I guess I'm at the other side of the world, and you're all there. So and here, here we are. As uh, as John G pointed out, my um, talk today will be about the um, a book I uh, completed a few years ago. I say we're advancing, which. Um, uh, which, as you could see, is called genetics in the madhouse. Oops, um, it's um, okay. So here we are back at the beginning. So uh, uh, um, it's called the uh, uh, genetics genetics in the madhouse. It might have been called um, uh, something like uh, you know the data of heredity. Uh, but the main point actually is to do, as uh, John G pointed out, to um, to link. Um, uh, the you know now uh, you know one of the most charismatic and uh, you know uh, and much discussed uh, if areas of science uh, genetics and especially human genetics but uh, to link uh, that activity to um, not just to um, to laboratories but to you know ordinary sites of human learning well I don't know what's ordinary exactly but um, but these are um, psychological and uh, um, psychiatric um, sites, uh, places where um, uh, um, people judged to be um, mentally damaged in some way were gathered up and studied and there and, um, and, and, and the, the members of this of these groups you know counted um, to try to understand what the, what the sources of this this might be. So um, there's uh, my um, the, the title of title page of my, book on the right, and uh, it's very much suited to psyche. I just say one more thing about uh, about about psyche, which is uh, it's um, here is um, usually <clears throat> um, regarded as, um, you know, that is the, the psyche is often often allied to the two forms of uh, human science, which are, are the, the psi disciplines, and the psi disciplines would be psychology and psychiatry, and we will see that both of these are involved in my study 
my story today. So advance the slide, the new slide. Um, we begin um, the story with just a little emblem of this mundane kind of knowledge, and we'll see it. So a few of these, and I paid quite a lot of attention to them in my my book. It is the a table. And this is a table of, uh, of an institution established in the early 1830s in the United States. Uh, you it can't see these numbers very well, I think, from here, or I, I can't see them exactly either, but they are a list of the, um, well, I mean, at least the, the upper part of this is a list of the of what they took to be the causes of, uh, of mental illness. It was... Um, Actually, by the early 1830s, when this table was printed, it was quite routine. It was becoming routine. It became routine. And um, uh, to uh, fill the reports of these mental institutions with tables, I was interested in all of them, but I especially focused on the efforts to ascertain the causes of insanity. And that is like one of the tables uh, or of the figures on this uh, chart. Uh, it gives the what they call the uh, the, the causes of insanity, um, um, and those causes were, um, you know, diverse. Uh, there was as we you know, follow the history of this effort to uh, to to measure the, the causation of insanity, we see um, you know some changes and yet actually some amazing continuity uh, in the assignment of cause and actually heredity is uh, was present right from the start. Um, you know, that might be a little bit surprising. We might think you know that, that uh, it would be a scientific uh, you know question uh, to assign the causes of heredity and uh, certainly doctors were um, active in this story right from the start but it turns out that uh, it wasn't um, um, it was never the assignment of uh, of causes was never controlled by experts alone. Um, uh, rather, um, uh, it was uh, you know this was a, a, a bureaucratic enterprise, and then, then there was a, a medical uh, you know a, a enterprise of um, of uh, assigning. Um, I mean, who I mean, who uh, of the, who who would who would decide what the cause should be. And again, you might think, well, it would be the, the doctors, and they are the ones who wrote it down, but it seems as if it was very often, in fact, that, that heredity was already a, uh, a widely under, or widely recognized concept, and that the uh, assignment of cause was actually very often done by, I mean, that is by, by, the, by maybe the patient themselves, or, or more likely, perhaps a family member or other person who brought the person, brought the uh, the sick person to the um, to the mental hospital. Uh, next slide. Um, John V said, you know, more or less, I mean, correctly, but there's no simple answer to this. The story goes back to the 1820s, and I would say 1820s and 1830s are where, when when it really gets going. Though so here we have uh, an, an interesting. Um, um, well, this is this is not a all the all the rest of my slides are you know are in real um, real time or about are, are from the period we're talking about. This is actually a play about the madness of King George, which I recommend highly if you've never heard a play, and then a movie, which I recommend highly if you have never seen it. But um, um, I put it here because it's actually already in 1789, um, faced with the question of trying to determine whether the king who had, was suffering serious mental difficulties, whether he was likely to cure a physician named Black, uh, went to the, um, to, to, you know, Bethlehem, Bedlam, the great state mental hospital in, uh, in uh, London, uh, to try to get data to determine uh, how different kinds of, uh, of uh, patients, how likely they were to recover and for the British state, the great question was, uh, you know, would George the Third recover, or was it necessary to um, to uh, to appoint a, you know, a regent to um, to govern in his place? And um, well, so in the course of that, um, the the physician Black uh, uh, gathered up um, data on uh, as much as he could. Actually, there was there was no data at 
that point, but it turns out there was an apothecary uh, there who was, uh, you know, collecting the numbers, you know, privately, and uh, Black uh, persuaded him to uh, to to uh, to uh, uh, release them so that he could, uh, uh, you know, um, assess the question with the best data that was available. And there we see uh, on the uh, on this table um, the the you know the causes of heredity as assigned by uh, by by William Black. Um, and it turns out uh, that um, right from the start, heredity was a very common, in fact, except for the crab bag of causes listed right at the, in, in the first uh, slide or the first line, they're the most common cause of, uh, of uh, insanity as assigned by, um, uh, by uh, well, by what exactly, by, who, by whom exactly, by the apothecary, by the doctors, in some way by the by whoever brought these patients into Bedlam uh, to be assessed. So it's, a, it's a actually, you know, who is making heredity? It isn't, certainly isn't, certainly isn't geneticists at this point. It isn't really, even the doctors have a somewhat subordinate role. It's a, it depends quite a lot on the individuals you know, bringing their sick relatives and the relatives themselves to the institution. So it's a curious kind of science uh, and uh, I think quite fascinating in that way. Now, next slide. Um, here's a, a, another uh, of the iconic slides. This one is, is a couple of decades later. It's uh, I, I, I am much amused by this this one, and I can't linger on it for very long. But it is it is interesting, for instance, that he um, uh, Esquirol, uh, who was uh, in the early 19th century the most um, famous and influential of uh, well, they called them alienists, and which is also the word in English for a long time before psychiatrists kind of took this over in the not not until the 20th century. Uh, and um, um, uh, again, um, uh, Esquirol found uh, heredity as uh, a very important cause. And if you can read these slides, you find all sorts of things, all, all sorts of more ordinary. Uh, conditions and um, and uh, and psychological or you know social uh, situations like um, like uh, lost love and failure in uh, business as assigned as causes, but again, um, um, heredity was uh, on the top as the first one. It's, it's a little bit amusing if you can see in the lower. I think it's it's just kind of off the, off off the slide. In fact, um, it wasn't very. Very sure about how to uh, how to uh, assign these uh, or to to uh, you know um, display these numbers, and he actually has a higher number for the total number for the number of cases caused by heredity is actually on this greater greater than the total number. So um, <laughs> he did have something in mind for that. Uh, I'll just I'll, we'll just move on to the next uh, to the next slide. Um, 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 as we you know, move, I mean, let's say, let's, the, um, I was very interested in trying to understand you know, what went on in the confrontation of, well, who exactly? The, um, the, um, the doctor at the mental institution, uh, probably often a relative who brought the patient in, um, maybe a public health officer who had, you know, so had, had some role in committing the, the, the patient to the institution in the first place, but uh, certainly not a hierarchical or well-ordered, you know, medical decision to decide what the what the cause of insanity was. But so I, I mean, actually, I, I I often said as I was uh, you know working on this, I would sure like to have been you know present if I could have put up put in a tape recording and found out what was going on when they assigned the cause. Um, but it seems <coughs> well I've, as I've suggested that it was not uh, simply a medical decision, but they, because the, 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 the doctors who were unlikely to be present when the determination, when that is when it, it seemed as if uh, the patient was, uh, was insane, um, um, they depended quite a lot on what, what, what the ordinary people thought about uh, causes of insanity and what they, uh, what, what the, when they thought it had, uh, you know, it had become, uh, you know, a problem and needed and required, uh, you know, the, the patient to be brought to brought to the institution. Um, 
But the, this effort, this fascinating and difficult to read, I realize, um, a slide that points to a, one of the first, uh, you know, moves toward a, um, you know, systematizing um, the assignment of of uh, of cause. And the, here, um, the, uh, the at the retreat at York, which was one of the most famous of the early mental institutions. Now we're about eighteen forty. Um, uh, decided uh, uh, to go beyond just tallying what people told him. He was a Quaker at a Quaker institution and he had access to all kinds of data on other members of that religious group, which, which, which made up most, uh, first all and then, then uh, many of the patients for a long time. And he actually went back and this, we, I, I show there the, a, um, a, a patient, uh, um, you know the medical book where they were writing down these things, and actually you can you, you can at least see that um, um, we have you know it's a very it's a very short uh, 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 about about one page per patient, so there's not that much information. But um, uh, but the, um, the at the retreat at York in in 1839, when for the first time the um, medical superintendent was a doctor, the, the director of the place was a doctor. He went back through the files and um, and used what he could find out from other patients, from the from relatives and so on, in order to uh, to try to get a more complete assessment, a, more, a full number of the number of uh, of uh, of uh, um, of, of, of uh, the, the the numbers of the different causes. And um, and uh, so at this point, uh, um, he was going beyond uh, you know passively recording to um, investigating um, causes of or, or the effects of heredity in the production of mental illness. And so I take that to be one little little uh, landmark in the systemat systematization of this, uh, of this uh, uh, problem of determining, you know, well, what, what were the causes? And, and, and I should say here again, uh, there was a very, right from the start, there was a very considerable focus on heredity. Next slide. Um, and at the retreat of York, um, they were, um, I mean, the, the ways they collected data are fascinating. I can only say a little bit about this, but one, uh, if, if you can read the, 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 uh, the, the text there, you'll see um, that uh, the medical um, directors at York were telling patients as they arrived or as they considered coming to the institution, uh, you know, and as the, the uh, the institution collected data, they said it's extremely important. They said for for your relative who has been committed to the institution, it's extremely important for your relative to have this data. And that's kind of, uh, I think we have to say that's not true or it's, it's stretching, or they were stretching the truth. They wanted to, they really wanted the data and they were willing to tell, tell um, for the sake of let's just say science, and they were willing to um, to uh, uh, you know to, to tell uh, the, the family members of the patients that this was uh, essential also for the recovery of their uh, of their, their their family members. So next slide. Uh, we switched to another site. This is I mean this um, talk is kind of a um, Moving, moving from moving from site to site is not like a single place where all this uh, all this work happens, but rather lots of uh, I mean a shared institution to some degree. Though they're not all the same, but uh, a shared institution, um, um, but in different places with different directors pursuing somewhat different aims. And here, actually, Norway uh, somehow emerged as uh, as a rather important. Place for this and the story of the Norwegian investigation of causes of heredity reflects uh, a commitment of the the Norwegian government. It was um, under a Swedish king, but the I think this is a, is a Norwegian story. So, and here we have um, actually the Norwegians um, had what was commonly took what was commonly understood as the first real census of insanity in Norway. I mean, the first anywhere, and they did it. That it happened in happened in Norway, and they gathered up their information. They put it on maps. That was a a common thing 
to do, and they were very interested. You can see the shaded maps reflect the different degree that are the um, um, under the um, um, prevalence of insanity in different places, with the darkest lines representing the um, the highest level of insanity. And um, this uh, this um, uh, Doctor uh, uh, Dahl, um, uh, you know, with the support of uh, of, uh, of of the of the state uh, legislature, uh, um, I, I proposed to um, I mean, thought that he that he could uh, investigate causes of insanity in a different way by um, looking for the places which showed the most insanity. So, what, you know, can we understand? He wondered, uh, you know, the causes of insanity by looking at the different um, levels in different regions, by, like, like for instance, by not simply get, get collecting uh, large scale data now, but by looking at um, uh, at a very specific places where the rate of uh, insanity seemed to be especially high. Uh, so next slide. Um, so Dahl, uh, I mean, again, I could go on about this at some length, but uh, let's just say Dahl, um, you know, found some sites, some, uh, you know, particular locations that seemed to be of interest, uh, he carried out uh, you know very detailed, minute investigations, uh, asking around uh, with from families, getting help from the, from relatives, including relatives of of the of the of the mad of the insane, um, and out of that he produced um, a kind of a landmark. Where now it's now uh, 1859 when he published this thing. A um, uh, he. Uh, Put together these uh, tables of um, of um, uh, of uh, you know family members, um, and uh, you know from generation to generation to see whether it made sense to or and what to what extent it made sense to understand this as a hereditary um, cause. That is, uh, can could he follow uh, the um, the um, the Day, the uh, Norwegians use the word uh, anleg. Um, the German word is anlage. Same thing. This is the something like a um, um, a, um, a, a genetic factor or hereditary factor, and he's looking for the hereditary factor. And um, uh, already in uh, now, so already in 1859, uh, he so which is which is also by coincidence, you know, the year of Darwin's. Uh, um, origin of species. So I, I, I make a little joke of the of the um, of eighteen fifty nine uh, as uh, you know, in which uh, perhaps a doll is more important than Darwin for the history of uh, the investigation of heredity. Anyhow, um, uh, so um, doll th these these kinds of tables. It was another thirty years or more before these tables re. Surfaced and then they were they were rediscovered, but they they became the and, and we'll see a few of these later uh, the great emblematic um, uh, you know of, um, representation um, and it's uh, you know of of the of, of the um, transmission of as they as they thought of of of, of heredity. Now, next slide. Another site now. Um, more, even more, kind of you know, medical bureaucratic. Um, this is an effort at, a, at an institution in uh, in uh, in a, a German state to actually to track down. So he has these immense tables now, and he wants to wanted to track down the um, um, the well again he's, to, to investigate the causes, but to track down uh, you know what difference it made. You know, by, by bringing together a lot of different relatives, and I'll just skip by that and go on to the next slide, which um, brings us now to um, and these are all kinds of state institutions. Uh, this one, um, you know, one the, the natural site to of investigation was actually the particular institution, and then because this was um, of great state interest um, and often funded by well, various levels, but a higher level of, of government than simply, um, you know, one institution. Um, um, so th there was from um, very early in the 19th century, um, 
the tables were published, um, and there was a natural temptation to try to, you know, compare these. There are all sorts of different ways to do this, and uh, this um, slide uh, represents uh, a grand effort from about the same time as the last one, the 1860s, to um, <clears throat> to make all the tables of hered of, of insanity. Um, you know, sufficiently similar that you could um, bring the numbers together. And they supposed it's a natural thing. You know, they, they lived in a, in a great age of data already, or they wanted to. Uh, and they thought that if they could just bring together data from, uh, and, uh, this is the first all over France, which to some extent they had already achieved, and then maybe all over, well, the world, that they meant the European world, anyhow, every, you know, but they, would, they were ha happy to, uh, to extend the project as widely as they could when it became possible to do it. Uh, here was a great effort and representing one um, statistical, you know, um, uh, psychiatric or uh, psychiatric effort to um, um, gather up data and to, uh, uh, and by using very large numbers to figure out. So it's a kind of a human genome project, you know, there are human uh, heredity project there. Uh, that he wanted to do, and to make all the uh, to make all the data, uh, you know, consistent enough that, that they could be uh, brought together. Next slide. Um, well, I'll just say this is th this person uh, th thought it wouldn't work, uh, which um, I think was true uh, in the sense that uh, it was not easy. And uh, and who and uh, F. W. Hagen uh, st stood for uh, a rival. Uh, version again, actually, however, um, in the you know sort of psychological medical domain, he said no. You know, we never will never get the kind of standardization that would make, um, or at least not in, in that really never the, that that kind of information. Rather, we need to exploit the um, the detailed knowledge at a particular institution that the staff of the institution have. So there's a you know kind of a fight over how to. Go about this, um, and um, both versions of the story, you know, can continue to be discussed and uh, and, and and fought out uh, for generations. Uh, next slide. Um, another project for um, for doing this is uh, well, maybe you know, a great technological achievement, which recalls our own enthusiasms. Um, the German or the Prussian census, which was the basis for later for a unified German census. Well, this guy, um, Ernst Engel, um, had in mind uh, that, uh, um, um, well, using a use of index cards. So it's a kind of a computing technology. And actually another um, person in our group that uh, Chandvi mentioned was interested in, in, um, in this, in computation. Um, um, it turns out that the uh, the um, the sorry, I'm still not totally awake here, but um, I, I want to say that the the table um, that he collected were um, you know we, he set set it up in such a way that they could bring in this information from all over well all over Prussia, um, put them on index cards and sort them by you know. Kind of a kind of uh, kind of a shuffle like a like a like a, um, a uh, playing card shuffling um, and they created actually a way of uh, tallying uh, the, the numbers for all over Germany that was so effective that it caused that that Germany was quite slow in adopting the um, the computers uh, co you know, com computation when it became available in the twentieth century. So anyhow, I'll move, move, next slide. Uh, and here, here it is as a real state enterprise bringing together the, the, the product of that kind of investigation, bringing together all kinds of information. And, and you can just see here, I've trans I have the German text in small letters and, the, and some English translation in, uh, on the, in the filling most of the screen. And you see that they are, um, 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 they, that with uh, Engels um, technologies are trying to, um, to bring together, you know, the, the whole range of data on heredity, to print it in standard 
volumes and again actually with a particular focus in um, hereditary causes uh, on the supposition that um, that uh, family transmission was a very important and perhaps the most important cause of heredity. So um, there's a, the dynamic of this bureaucratic, you know, psychiatric, psychological enterprise, um, you know, with the support of the state. Eventually, this German effort, I mean, actually, every, in, in many countries, but perhaps most impressively in Germany, they you know, attempted to bring together data from all kinds of institutions to, to, to connect the um, uh, you know, different kinds of data um, and to bring it together um, as a, um, you know, as a um, chronicle and perhaps as a kind of explanation of, of heredity. This is, these uh, tables came to look sinister later and actually the story, the, the very, I mean, since um, um, it wasn't only um, you know, Jews and other ethnic groups who, who in the Nazis were um, gathered up and, um, and, uh, and murdered, uh, but also actually mental uh, inhabitants of mental institutions. And in a way we see here, I don't want to say that already in, uh, in, the, in the 1880s that they're you know, deliberately murdering people, which they certainly were not, but um, they created the data that made that kind of intervention possible also. On the next slide. Um, well, there are different ways of doing it. Um, the statistical was the most common. The, I mean, the attempt to make this um, uh, more predictive assumed different shapes. And this, um, this, the, you, um, this is one kind of table, actually quite in contrast with the ones we've been seeing associated with family degeneration and the table there um, uh, um, is, uh, uh, is um, uh, actually looking at the development in a family, which and supposing that there is a, you know, a, um, um, a, you know, family, that uh, a family tendency to, 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 to degenerate, to get worse, the, the, the main table there shows um, um, a, a degenerationist story from on the left, the first member of the family to uh, the extinction of the whole family uh, at the end of the story and in the 18, I mean, actually, well, really for some degree from the 1850s and 1860s, and then very much in the 1890s, this story of degeneration became uh, very widespread. I'm looking at it now uh, in just one of its aspects as um, an attempt to be predictive uh, using using numbers, but it's uh, it also looks to us like something very different from from uh, what, how, how we understand heredity. And if anybody asks me about that, I could say more. But we'll, so, so we'll move on to the next to, to the next slide here. Um, and uh, I was pretty amused by this. Degeneration was uh, was a you know a fad and uh, um, um, a, uh, you know, a a great kind of public campaign to understand not just I mean with with um, um, insanity. Um, at the center of the story, but taking in all kinds of other things as well. Um, and um, um, uh, so that was, you know, uh, uh, this um, table, table also reflects a, a concern about that, but in a different kind of a mode. And uh, I was amused to see this great cultural movement of, 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 of um, you know, identifying degeneration and finding degeneration of cultures, you know, uh, going on everywhere that uh, this uh, represents a, an effort by a German um, statistical um, alienist, you know, medical doctor or psychiatric doctor to try to show that it didn't happen that way. So I'm not going to go over this. We could, it's another thing we could look at or I could, um, and, I, and I discuss it in the book, but let's just say uh, it um, was um, um, represented, uh, I mean, he, he has his, this cross table to show that in fact, uh, people with a weak, with a little bit of a mental problem do not tend to become the sources of the next Heredity, rather that uh, that the inheritance of of insanity is um is from you know true uh, mental illness to true mental illness, and not from you know 
minor little deviations and ticks and things to, so it's not degenerating. And he used his tables to try to refute this, uh, to this great, uh, um, you know, psych, um, uh, great uh, cultural movement of degeneration. So we'll just let that be enough for now. Next slide. Um, yeah, well, I guess so that's, uh, that, that, that's just a, a summary. So next slide, please. So, um, well, story goes on. Um, well, here I have, uh, um, uh, you know, a, 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 a couple of famous characters in the story of, um, well, of eugenics and of human genetics, uh, Charles Darwin um, and um, his cousin, Francis Galton. And I was, um, I, um, and if you think it's, uh, you know, the story is a, uh, is a, a story of evolution, which the Galton and Darwin, who are, who are, by the way, cousins, at least by one grandfather, seem to stand for, then maybe that's, that certainly people have wanted to make that an important part of the story, and I don't deny that. Uh, however, I discovered that this is a Francis Galton, but Francis Galton had a cousin, um, uh, uh, also uh, Galton, um, um, who, uh, you know, investigated these kinds of things actually as a, um, a with um, uh, Florence Nightingale, with he was allied with uh, Florence Nightingale, was studying oh, causes of um, of uh, slow school learning and wondering about hereditary sources. But it uh, turns out that um, um, uh, it wasn't just uh, you know you know evolutionary scientists, but all all kinds of you know in an in an era. In the 18, from the 1870s and 1880s and 1890s, when public schooling was becoming widespread and even mandatory, uh, the problem that many of the children didn't seem to be able to keep up became a pressing one. It was associated with um, anxieties about possibly increasing crime. Was, was crime inherited if, if, or if crime wasn't inherited, was it, was it, was it possible that People who couldn't learn, children who couldn't learn, were more susceptible to becoming cr criminals, <clears throat> and um, <coughs> um, so. The, in fact, um, it's another form. I've been emphasizing mental institutions so far, and now we look at schools for feeble-minded, as they were called, which became perhaps similarly, or even perhaps even more a more important site for the investigation of heredity. And then we see that, uh, you know, that, uh, well, biology and, and Darwinian evolution, it's kind of there, but, uh, but uh, not only Francis Galton, the famous as the, you know, as a founder, or maybe the, you know, the first, the, the person who made eugenics a public, uh, you know, enterprise, that he's uh, important there, but his cousin, who is actually investigating causes of Difficulty that kids have in school and um, and the environments from which they come and so on is just as important and maybe a more important person. And uh, then it turns out amusingly that they are, they are the cousins, uh, these, this, these family members themselves who are investigating family heredity. And it turns out that the uh, all kinds of um, ordinary institutions like mental, like hospitals and um, and uh, Schools are very or, or extremely important formative sites for the investigation of mental illness. And next slide. <clears throat> There's um, Galton. You know that's he, that, that's his mugshot, as you'll see uh, another another form of uh, you know a, a, a way of uh, or a link between um, uh, uh, you know the investigation of well mental illness. Uh, the investigation of uh, you know of, uh, of of social problems like schools like like school failure and uh, prisons. Uh, next slide. Um, and here's another famous character in the story. By the way, you know you just to be clear that with the um, the, the, the Galton material, sort of 1870s 1880s. Carl Pearson, a uh, famous statistician, as I hope some of you will know, and uh, who allied himself. He was a, he's a, a generation younger than. Uh, then uh, Galton allied himself to Galton's story, and um, um, and as you know, people know him for his statistical tools. But he was a you know, like so many of the people we've been looking at here was um, very deeply engaged in gathering data on things, including taking advantage of the data 
that um, um, that well schools and prisons and um, especially mental institutions provided for him. So Galton, Galton did that as well. And again, uh, it, it illustrates the, the link between, well, these institutions associated with psychology and mental illness or psychiatry and the, um, and the investigation of heredity and uh, these data, I mean, the data, I mean, so I, in a way, what I did in this book was to take as my motto, you know, follow the data. And the data took us to uh, to all these institutions where um, mental illness and whatever mental weakness were um, taken care of, were investigated, and were counted. And uh, they formed a very important, you know, uh, basis for the investigation of uh, you know of uh, human heredity, especially of her hereditary or conditions supposed to be hereditary, hereditary uh, that are were of public concern. Uh, next slide. Um, okay, we here's a, I, I shift to uh, an American scene um, um, uh, at the Eugenics Record Office. That also is, if some of you may know, uh, as it was in the United States, was a very famous site for the investigation of human heredity and actually for eugenics. And uh, 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 Davenport, who, uh, um, who, who created this uh, institution, with support from lots of elite, uh, you know, foundations and uh, you know, and with some public money, as well, uh, had formed the uh, uh, the you know notion of trying to use. This is what we've been seeing all along in this presentation. But now he wants to in the to move in the same line to gather up all the data from all kinds of institutions. He lists some of them there: the places for the feeble-minded for. You know, at schools and prisons and all sorts of things. And with that uh, to, uh, well, next slide, to um, um, uh, uh, to gather up the information that would al will allow a comprehensive study of human heredity. Um, so he said, you know, he discovered in his own time, he thought he, he came in as a biologist. He thought this was a biological problem and he was going to use Mendelian genetics and solve it. And then he, once he got into it, he discovered that there's all, all kinds of data already being collected by various institutions to do that. And he re-channeled his dream to, um, uh, from, you know, from a sort of strictly biological one to a data gathering one from all the social institutions where, uh, where, 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 the, where these numbers were available and to try to, you know, uh, I, to identify the causes of, well, human problems. It's a eugenic story for him, as well as a genetic and, uh, um, um, uh, you know, a genetic and um, um, uh, um, I mean, a human story, uh, a uh, one that uh, again takes up the all these all these biological and social and let's say psychological psychiatric institutions. So next slide. Um, so this is um I just, I don't, we'll just go go by this, but the, the, the um, Davenport uh, came into the a breeders institution for breeding cattle and sheep and you know and things and uh, kind of hijacked it to make it a a um, um, an institution to investigate uh, um, um, you know, eugenic issues instead in the enterprise I mentioned to try to gather up all this information. Here, here first it was gathering up information about sheep and cows and pigs and things. And now could, could we do this instead with uh, humans, uh, you know, gathering up gathering up data and, uh, and, 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 and investigating the causes. And so again, this takes us back to, you know, the theme of this, of this uh, lecture series that is, um, 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 now they were they were going to look at uh, at uh, you know at key institutions. Uh, Davenport had in mind all sorts of all sorts of institutions. Um, the only ones he could make work even a little bit were the ones that already existed as uh, as sites of data and data and the investigation of data. They are the ones I have been emphasizing. That is, first of all, um, um, psychi psychiatric or, or um, you know, mental hospitals, and secondly. Um, um, schools. So um, that is 
psychiatry and psychology. Next slide. Um, I say that the only so he had he had a dream of uh, you know so many institutions and only a couple of them worked out. Uh, here here also are a couple of the uh, of the, the famous characters actually from the from the history of um, well um, eugenics anyhow and to some degree um, uh, genetics or they should be famous in the history of genetics. Uh, one Henry Goddard, a um, psychologist. One Aaron Rosenoff a, um, well, alienist or psychiatrist, uh, both of whom was affiliated themselves with, Daven with, with Davenport, the biologist, um, and uh, set up institutions to expand the gathering of heredity from the same kinds of populations that we've been talking about all along. Next slide. <clears throat> and here are, to do that, um, they created these famous eugenic field offices, uh, uh, investigators, most of them women, not all, but most of them women graduates of new um, public uh, colleges and universities that um, were becoming much more accessible to women in this era. And they were, you know, they stood also for a more systematic um, you know, form of investigation, which we can talk about if anybody has questions. Next slide. Um, uh, actually, what another, uh, well, um, to do that, um, Davenport actually was quite uncharacteristically, I mean, I have to say, reading this, I realized how, how to what extent the uh, um, how, how ex exceptional it was to bring in a biologist at this point to a medical meeting. Um, and but the, so Davenport did that anyhow in the, the mingling of, um, of medical and biological, which was pretty novel, uh, really, really took off in the early 20th century. And anyhow, this is an illustration of some of the, shows pictures of, of, of some of the lead characters there. Next slide. Um, well, I mean, it was not a seamless story, um, and I think you can, I can say a lot about this, but I'll just say a little here, the two, or the two characters we've been, we're looking at at the moment, that is the, psycho the psychiatrist Rosenoff and the uh, psychologist, um, um, or, um, uh, you know, to, uh, to you know, involved in this uh, in this uh, collaboration, but they had. I mean, actually, the idea of um, oh, of uh, of a gene as as it was a genetic factor or gene uh, as the cause of, uh, for instance, mental illness. So I'll just give one example, which um, which uh, um, I mean, on the one hand, they were they were keen on the idea of genetic explanation of mental difficulties or of, of uh, psychiatric difficulties, but uh, let's say to, just to take the, the psychologist now, um, he was, I had actually been in, in, involved in, uh, in um, um, measurement of, of uh, mental ability, of, uh, IQ, you know, IQ testing, I guess you all know about that. And IQ testing actually, if one thing for sure was that the IQ was always treated, was, was treated as, as a continuous variable, that is as a kind of a normal curve or something. The norm, it's one of the sites where the, where the normal curve became important. So um, that didn't actually work very well um, with um, a genetic you know, understanding, uh, which had um, you know, discrete, either you had it or you didn't, either you were mental illness, mental, mentally ill or you're not, either you had the genetic factor of the gene for, for mental illness or not. That's the way Mendel, you know, the new Mendelism, which was so influential in the early 20th century seemed to view it. And uh, it was not easy to square that with a different kind of view, which showed uh, continuous variability. So it didn't work that well. And that was, um, and the, those difficulties are also quite fascinating for uh, aspects of this story, which we can discuss if you want. Next question, next uh, slide. Um, well, I mentioned, you know, we, I, I showed you the Norwegian Ludwig Dahl of, uh, the, you know, a few, some minutes ago. Um, 
in the course of this, actually, the, his, he didn't attract that much attention at first, and then he came back with the new, you know, with the um, the new focus on um, on human genetics in um, in uh, biological and and medical investigation. And so, actually, here's here's and the, the story of the transformation and uh, and re integration of these uh, of these data is also quite an interesting one and uh, reflects the um, you know a widespread and continuing you know a, a, a attempt to uh, to integrate uh, various kinds of mental and psychological data in in, in, the, in this story now, next slide uh, well you can just look at that for a minute you probably many of you have seen this kind of slide before, uh, but it is an attempt to to go not with the ideal of let's say mental conditions as whether um, you know slow school learning or mental illness as continuous. Um, it should these slides show um, these psychiatric and psychological conditions as continuous. They became the the standard, you know, widely recognized, you know, almost recognized universally recognize you know uh, um, uh, labeling for um, for the transmission of mental illness which was you know mental disease to mental disease mental weakness to or you know disability to mental disability uh, and um, um, again here for, from the 19 oh in the 1900s and 19 teens and 1920s and 1930s there were just you know thousands and hundreds of thousands of uh, of tables like this, trying to illustrate the transmission of, uh, of uh, mental illness as, as a specific cause. So next uh, slide. Um, well, there's also a eugenic story. I think I'll just leave that, um, uh, not say too much about it, but you know, uh, um, uh, the story also, but perhaps you all know this, uh, leads into, um, questions of um, or issues of trying to control population. We've been talking about eugenics before and the, um, the sterilization is now a huge issue in, uh, in discussion. I probably, probably, in, though I don't know, anyhow, whatever, certainly in, certainly in, uh, in North America and Europe and in other places as, as well. Um, and um, it took us, you know, most, uh, an alarming form. I mean, sterilization against the will of parents of mothers was widespread in many places. Um, it went still farther in Germany, as you will know. Uh, next slide. And Ernst Rudin, um, a, um, a, 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 a psychiatrist by training, um, was you know a lie, part of a, a couple of uh, of uh, mental in, of uh, of uh, institutions for investigating. Well, I mean, I just let's just re remind you uh, as part of this story of um, of uh, um, mental illness as a you know great social evil, as a systematic social problem, and. Uh, um, the story, as I think I've said already, was through the 19th century, um, probably more because uh, the institutions were available than because mental illness was really becoming more common. But whatever uh, was, uh, was uh, you know, uh, the, the, the data story was one from beginning to end from the first, you know, first counts in the late 18th century into the, you know, the, the the era of the, the 20s and the 1920s and 1930s and actually on until the uh, until the 1950s when the institutionalization set in was one of just relentless relentless growth and um, um, uh, the you know you may know that before the most famous uh, you know part of the Nazi Holocaust was uh, it was instituted in the 1940s there was a massive uh, uh, well, imprisonment, confinement, and killing of uh, mental patients. Um, and uh, so, I mean, actually, exactly how he was involved in this is still somewhat controversial, but he was pretty friendly to it. And so this is definitely, you know, a part of that story as well. Uh, next slide. 
Um, well, <clears throat> this um, they use tools of statistical analysis um, that actually, uh, the, I mean, I, I say the, um, uh, all my characters virtually have been men in this story, in part because, um, at least in the, in the psychiatric story, because uh, doctors, uh, it, was not, it was rarely possible for women to be doctors. Here's a woman who comes into the story and, uh, and um, um, provided, a, I'll just say, provided a new basis for, um, for trying to um, 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 examine you know, her, the, the, this uh, hereditary transmission using controls uh, rather, than just, rather than just counting patients trying to compare populations. And I'll just leave it at that for now. Next slide. Uh, that, uh, that, that kind of analysis, that kind of controlled uh, study became very important for the, um, for the German investigation. The, here at, a, at the great uh, Munich um, psychiatric institution, which was, I mean, which I mean, now is um, you know, generally regarded as, uh, as, uh, as uh, representing a kind of horrible story, a part of the story of the history of um, of um, uh, the investigation of mental illness, of um, psychiatry, um, uh, it was not that different from what happened in other countries until it led to um, um, uh, to the extern uh, the attempts to reduce um, mental illness by um, murdering or whatever, killing uh, many of the many of the patients. Um, um, uh, it is anyhow. It, there, there was a, the, you know, a, a key center of this was again at one of these uh, at this mental institution in, in Munich, and I, it has it is important to recognize that the what is odd, what we sometimes like to treat as first of all a German aberration or something that the, the um, this uh, psychiatric institution was generously supported by grants from um, great, the great American institutions like the Rockefeller Foundation and it's uh, the story is uh, international even if different countries have their own characteristics and some are more alarming than others. Uh, next slide. Um, <clears throat> You know the, the story of um, um, the institutions and the story of you know of um, of the mistreatment and uh, you know and imprisonment and sometimes really murder is a story um, um, that uh, drew from you know drew, drew, drew from all this data from uh, that we've been whose trajectory we've been we've been looking at over you know a century and a half. Uh, next slide. And um, when I showed you some of the <clears throat> um, uh, the uh, eugenic uh, field workers before, and here is a, some something like a comparable institution in uh, Germany, in the Munich inst in the Munich institution, where they conducted you know extensive uh, investigation of populations, both in the um, in the in the in the, in the um, <clears throat> Um, the mental hospitals, and also actually going out into into larger populations. So, and that's you know part of this trajectory from the specific investigation in uh, in, uh, in mental institution in mental institutions to extend to ex extending into general populations to try to investigate the hereditary transmission of uh, of uh, mental illness and you know and to develop a, a human science of heredity. And so. I think we're about, I think that's the last slide, is that right? Oh, oh well, I, okay, I, we just, um, it just, um, <clears throat> it takes, I mean, this um, background was present uh, in when it, you know, it, it took a new form um, in the, um, after the Second World War, now it should be more scientific and more purified, and yet it definitely developed out of the tools that, uh, that had been created earlier. Next slide. Okay, so I'm. Mean, um, let's just, um, yeah, I won't. I won't we'll, we'll, let's just I'll just sum it up and say um, that the story of psyche, of um, you know, of uh, psychiatry and psychology in, in relation to human 
Heredity is one that uh, is, does not, was not set off from ordinary social institutions, but, but was developed out of them. And I think that's kind of the, the you know, the, the, the most important, the story, the, the way I would finish the story and the kind of the, the conclusion is that it's, um, it's uh, you know, we do not have a, a kind of science that's walled off from, you know, from, from, uh, um, you know, from all, all kinds of human activity. Uh, but that this story is a story of, uh, of uh, you know, of social institutions, of medical institutions, of psychiatric and psychological institutions, engaged with um, you know with poverty programs and school programs, uh, and developing a, um, a, a a science which is not you know cut off from the world, not science isolated, but uh, but science integrated with all kinds of of, of social state human institutions and uh, I would just say I think that um, you know the changes of the of our understanding of history of science uh, of uh, over the last uh, uh, over the last uh, several decades that perhaps that's the most fundamental of them all not to suppose that um, that this kind of knowledge is isolated from ordinary human activity but that it grows out of it and uh, and, and and reshapes it to some degree so with that I'll finish up and thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, so uh, in the first instance, uh, Ted, thank you very much also because you woke up at an unearthly hour to be able to be with us this evening in India, but it's extremely early morning for you. So thank you in the first instance. It's light here now. So that'd be okay. <laughs> Yes, we can see the light creeping in. Um, so this is this is quite an incredible story, as you rightly say, you know, of distributed sites of knowledge production, which, you know, where, where the human mind is of interest to various institutions motivated for different motivated by different reasons and, and serving different serving purposes that are that are different. And we see how they all um, converge. And, and the, the first question that I want to ask, and, and uh, this is, you know, to to all of us listening in, please do uh, share your questions as well in the Q&A box, but I'll start off by asking you one question, which is that, you know, one can, one can understand the specificity of why a certain kind of knowledge is being produced in the prison, in the school, in the, in the home for those considered uh, with mental defects, etc. What is the motivation or how does the motivation how does the external motivation in a sense to congeal all of this into one kind of knowledge what drives that and i mean how do you understand that right like um, so so could you could you say a little bit about what is the motivation behind um, bringing it all together in a sense no, um, <clears throat> yeah that's a, that's a good question i'm not sure i know how to answer it the um, um, <clears throat> i mean in some way it's um, <laughs> Perhaps this is a bit glib, but um, I mean these are state projects. Yeah. So it's managing populations. I hadn't, haven't mentioned Foucault, and I, you know, I'm not following Foucault very closely, but surely on the general point, you know, looking looking at the um, at, at institutions like states and forms of power that go with that, that we see that running through the running through the story. Um, and perhaps that's perhaps that's the best answer I can give. So I, I'm, I'll be thinking about it. It's a, good, it's, a, it's a big, hard question, and I'll try to see if I can uh, think about that. It's um, thank you because you know, um, having read your other work um, uh, in the history of statistical thinking or the rise of statistical thinking, and listening to you talk about this book and you know earlier as well, my next question, in fact, was going to be: Do you see any relationship? To the, to the congealing of the nation state and you know, the kind of changes you're seeing in this kind of science emerging because statistics is the other, uh, um, you know, the other trajectory that, um, that builds on knowledge that's coming out of, out of these locations. So, so I think, I mean, I'm, I, I think that answer uh, uh, is convincing, but it, it, it would be great to see how that elaborates and you know, how one might actually um, uh, drive it a little further. Um, so, the the um, the other question I have is one where you know we've looked at now with you closely heredity as it relates to um, mental defect or the human mind and its problems as they've been identified through time in different ways. Are there 
other kinds of concepts, other kinds of ideas that are traced through um, by different institutions um, that that in a way come together, but not 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 like heredity, not like the idea of heredity, but as maybe even statistics that that are parallel to this. Is are there any parallel examples that one can look at at all? I know you've kind of hinted that this is um, in that sense unique, but is there any are there any comparables that uh, comparable um, efforts that you see or comparable disciplines or ideas that that you see developing through this time? Um, well, I mean, I mean the the uh, the obvious thing for me to mention, and um, I think it's significant. Well, you all know that uh, the very word statistics, for, you know, is is statistics. It's the state science, and um, yeah. you know, in the you mentioned my rise of statistical thinking, and I considered that the most original, you know, part of that book now, you know, whatever, 35 or 40 years old, but it, it was, it was to, to see, you know, the, um, um, the, <clears throat> the statistic really is what's, you know, what statistics was. And so, I mean, in a way, this, this asylum story in school, story of asylums in schools is also a little bit of statistics. That is, it. Um, mm. it's, well, we have the, the, you know, the profession of medicine and, uh, you know, an emerging profession of psychology or something, you know, having a, a big role, but they are also, they are able to exert power as also as uh, participating in, in, as agents of state. Hmm. Or, uh, and I think, so um, I think that's, um, in that sense, the, the psychiatry or the, 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 the genetic story I tell is linked to, you know, I don't want to, Turn this into a you know a great conspiracy or something, but it's kinds of activities that we associate with public action. Yeah. Instead, and statistics has been a extremely you know a fundamental um, tool of, for the for the um, for the ability to intervene in things like this, and you know mode of inquiry for trying to understand what's going on again for the sake of intervening. So um, uh, you know that's um, I think I think the. The, the the this this kind of uh, of exertion of power has uh, has you know, very wide reach. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So so for for those of us who've joined um, joined in this evening, um, I can't recommend enough uh, Ted's earlier work, but especially the rise of statistical thinking. And my colleagues will put a link to the book um, shortly in the chat box. Um, so it we. We're closing in on the time and uh, some young people will join you for the tutorial. So thank you again, Ted, for waking up, you know, at a, at a mm -hmm. take an hour to be with us. Um, for those thank of you. you who would like to share the lecture with your friends and colleagues, as you know, the lecture will be uh, available on our exhibition website and the YouTube channel. So please do check it out. Um, if uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm absolutely certain that you've enjoyed the lecture. So do sign up um, for a couple of lectures coming up. Uh, one which relates, um, to, uh, you know, uh, fairly closely to what Ted has spoken about, but not from the history of statistics, is Mad People's History by Geoffrey Rome. Um, we also have another colleague of ours who will be speaking shortly, Can the Mind Be Measured? Intelligence and its Quantifications by John Carson. Um, so, you know, do join us to, to listen to him as well. Uh, we have an exhibit um, in, the, in the exhibition. It's called The Asylum. And, uh, you know, that, that might help you sort of look at the practices uh, that Ted listed out to us today uh, in the Indian context. So you might have a, you know, you might have a look at it. And if you have questions, we will be uh, able to also take them back to people who have put it together, some of whom are actually team members. Uh, do give us your feedback and of course do not forget to visit the exhibition website because that's at the heart of you know uh, sort of this enterprise around which we congeal our public lectures, our film festival, our masterclasses and workshops and a range of activities to help make sense of this um, fairly sort of you know um, yeah amazing thing that is the human psyche. So thank you again Ted. And a very good morning to you. And uh, yeah, 